Hello! So today we are talking about vowels in IPA or the International Phonetic Alphabet. Now, if you've not heard of IPA before, basically it's just a series of symbols that each represent a specific sound. Um, so in the English language, we have letters, but for example, the letter A, you could say apple as an A. You have fame, sounds more like A, and then arrive sounds like uh. So we have different sounds all for one letter. So what IPA does, or the International Phonetic Alphabet, is it gives you one symbol for one sound. Now, for the general public, this can be a really helpful tool if you're learning a new language or perhaps you're studying accents or dialects. But for singers, um, understanding IPA can be so helpful, not only if you're singing in a foreign language, but specifically for vowel modification. And yes, that is foreshadowing. Um, this week, I want to talk to you guys about vowel modification. I think it is one of the most incredible yet underutilized tools that we have as singers. But before we start looking at vowel charts and before I explain any modifications to you, I thought it would be important that you understand what symbols we're using and what sounds they represent. Now, a couple of notes before we get into the actual vowels. The symbols that I'm going over today are by no means a complete list of all the vowel sounds in IPA. The symbols I have chosen are the ones we find more often in the English language and some romantic languages, but these are also the same sounds that you see most often in vowel modification charts that are produced by English speaking vocal pedagogues. So there are other vowel sounds, but we're just going to try and hone it in on the ones that I am going to address in the next video. The other thing I want to mention is that with each vowel sound, I am also going to give you some example words. Now, depending on where you live, your accent, your dialect, those may or may not be helpful. So regardless, I will be demonstrating each vowel sound for you as well. And with that, let's get right into it. So first up, we are starting with the sound E. It looks like a lowercase i. And some example words I have listed here are heat, feet, and keep. Next up, we have what looks like an uppercase I, and the sound here is I, as in bit, thin, or flip. Next up, we have a lowercase e, and this sounds like A. So we have say, fade, and ache. Next up is what looks like a backwards three, um, this is the sound e, eh, as in pet, when, or hem. Now, this next slide, I've got two different symbols listed because they're very, very similar. The first one, it looks like an A and an E squished together. I believe it's called ash. Um, this is the sound a, eh, and then the A by itself is also an uh, but it feels a little bit deeper, a little further back in the mouth. So the first example I have listed is hat, and the second one is basque. So I want you to say those words right now, actually, just so you can feel the difference in your mouth. We have hat, a little higher, and basque, which feels a little deeper, a little further back. All right, so this next slide has three different symbols, and they're all very similar, which is why I wanted to put them next to each other. Um, we have what looks like a lowercase cursive A, a backwards lowercase cursive A, and then what we would call an open O. So if you think of the words that I have listed there, calm, hot, walk, they're all very, very similar. They're just tiny little minute changes that you're making in your mouth to change those sounds. The good thing about vowel modification charts is that symbols that sound alike tend to be very close to each other on the chart. 
So even if you end up pronouncing these all the same, that's okay when it comes to vowel modification. If you're learning a language, you might want to be a little bit more precise, but for the purpose of vowel modification, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to get close. Next up, we have a lowercase o, which does sound like o. So a few example words include boat, code, or roam. Next up, lowercase u sounds like oo. Example words are you, boot, and food. The last few slides we have are what we consider more neutral vowels. Um, so the first one that looks like a three is considered an R colored vowel. And you can see by the word examples, well, even the first one is word. So it makes an uh sound, but you don't actually want to say the R. So in this case, we have word, thirst, and curl. Next up, we have two symbols. Um, the upside down E is called a schwa. And then you also have what looks like an upside down V. Um, both of them make the sound uh. Which one of these you use is dependent upon whether or not the syllable is accented. So you don't have to worry about that so much, but you can see we have the word the and also the word hut and that uh sound is the same for both. And last but not least, we have what I believe is an Ypsilon symbol, um, or you can think of a U with little tails on the side. Um, this is the sound uh. So example words include foot, book, and wood. And that is it. You made it. So we're just going to focus on those vowel sounds in my next video on vowel modification. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I will see you next time.